So uh, today I also watched three films from director uh, Heizuki Gosho, who uh, did Japan's very first um, narrative film to fully employ sound. This is 1931's The Neighbor's Wife and Mine. And um, the reason that Japanese cinema, one of the many, a couple of reasons that Japanese cinema uh, came so late to sound was the popularity of Benchy, which is basically silent films with uh, narration. So I'm not the biggest fan of those Benchy films, to be honest. And then also you had directors like Ozu who refused to do sound film because um, he had a friend who was working on uh, a sound technique and he waited until his friend's um, um, device was ready. So or, or you know, so that's why Ozu, like Chaplin, was one was holding onto silence way into past the rest of his contemporaries. So this film is it's fun. It's a really fun short, sixty five minutes, and it's basically about a um, playwright played by Atushi Watanabe who has um, gone to the country to work on a play that's due very soon, and they need the money to pay for their lives. They have two children. Um, his wife is played by Kinyu Tanaka, who was one of the first female directors in Japan. She was actually the second woman ever to direct films in Japan. She made a handful of films, all of which I can't track down anywhere, and I'm really bummed because they look amazing. She was also in almost 200 films and starred with um, all the great Japanese directors. She's fantastic as the wife who is just really trying to like make, keep her husband on task, feed their children, um, but still, you know, have a little fun. And the two of them uh, have sort of a playfully um, caustic relationship. And uh, eventually, there is so much noise happening that he just cannot write. First, there's this loud, angry cat. And then eventually, their neighbor um, brings a jazz band to their house and <laughs> keeps playing all this music. And She's played by um, Satoko Date, and basically they have to come to terms with the fact that sometimes playing, having having fun is is um, helpful in getting you to uh, work, but also spending time with your family is is important, and you need to balance the two. It's it's a fun little jazz age kind of film. Um, there's a great scene where uh, the playwright is asleep and he just wants to keep sleeping, but his daughter wants to wake him up. And it's like this two minute sequence of the daughter trying everything to wake him up and him just not having it. That I thought was really, really sweet. Um, and you can tell it's the first sound film because it's the sound is not quite there and it's a little tinny, like a lot of the early um, Hollywood films, the sound were as well. But it's just a fun family comedy um, and I recommend it. Great jazz songs. Uh, the next one was The Human Burden, and it's from 1935, and it's about a, a middle-aged couple whose two daughters are about to get married, and they're trying to figure out how to pay for them, but they also remember they have a young son, and they have to deal with him as well. There's a great sequence where the um, the father has figured, has just, like, he's dealt with it, he's got his daughters off and married, and he his wife tells him, why don't you go to the spa and, hang, and just chill for a couple days? And he's like, why don't you come with me? And she's like, um, I have to take care of our son. And he's like, oh, yeah, we still have one. And it's just this great moment where, um, you know, he's been so focused on this one aspect of his life that he's totally forgotten the fact that he indeed still has a young son. Um, and so it's it's really them dealing with, with family, uh, juggling family, um, what am I looking for, uh, responsibilities and, and trying to keep a float financially and it's it's a fun sweet sort of comedy drama it has a, it has a really funny um like ending i really enjoyed the comical note on which it ended about uh really just parents and and the relief that comes from from removing children from the nest eventually the third one I watched is from much later in his career and very different in tone from these two. And it's called An Innocent Witch, also known as A Woman of Orozan. And it's about a woman who, a, a teenager actually, who is in a small impoverished fishing village. Her 
when her father becomes ill and can no longer support the family, her mother um, prays a bit to the gods and then and then decides to sell their daughter off as a prostitute. This is a theme that happens in a lot of these. Um, actually, a lot of the Japanese films I've seen, even in the 30s, have this as a, as a plot point. Um, this woman, or this this girl, does not do well in the um, brothel. First, she has to lose her virginity to a, kind of a creepy dude who then takes sort of a, a ownership of her, even though he doesn't own her, and is violent and, and destructive. Um, she breaks the cardinal rule, which is not falling in love. Um, she gets into many, many, many bad situations because of this incredibly terrible situation she's been put in by her family. And it ends not well at all. And as a, it's a strict, dark, sad drama about the um, corruption within prostitution and the way in which uh, women were trafficked. Uh, there are many different um, representations of prostitution in Japanese cinema, starting with in the 20s all the way through. Um, I'm not actually sure what contemporarily because I haven't watched very many contemporary Japanese films, but through this era. And, and there was a stark change in the way that they were just, they were um, presented after the law changed in 1956, which came into full effect in 58, making it illegal and then making it this sort of underworld crime. Um, and the mob took over, obviously, and that, that turned terrible. When it was regulated in the red light district, there was some shame attached, depending on where you were, what kind of prostitute you were, and what kind of house it was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there was um, a slight bit of safety, and it was a, a, a an actual understood profession, and then it changes when it is this illegal um, activity. So this is definitely a film that is fully on the side of, like, Prostitution, when it's trafficking, is not great for anyone involved. So it was interesting to see um, basically 30 years' worth of this director's um, filmography. These are the only ones that were on Filmstruck, so I'm out with Gosho, but um, he made way more films than just these three. But these three are on Filmstruck right now, and I don't think they're available on DVD. So check them out while you still have Filmstruck, and uh, have a good night.